Welcome to how to start, how to stand out in a job interview, art of asking questions. Well, by following the advice um, that I talk about during this webinar, does not necessarily mean you would get all the jobs in the world, but failure to follow the advice would definitely lead you to missing out on great opportunities. Before I continue, I would like to go over some numbers with you. The recruitment numbers. A typical recruiter can work on about 12 job searches at any given time. And each person, each recruiter can fill about 25 jobs in a year. Now, when you think about it, it's not a lot of jobs. We typically fill about two positions a month. And the most difficult position I personally have filled, it took me two years to, to fill the position. Um, so you can assume that in order for one position to be filled, a recruiter needs to interview a lot of people to find that one match. Now, it's also fairly common for recruiters to interview about five to maybe seven candidates a day. Seven is definitely on the high side. Now, let's put some numbers together. Five candidates a day, right? And there are roughly about 250 business days in the year. And that's about 1,250 candidates a recruiter can typically speak with in a year. But there are only 25 of them are being hired. That's roughly 2%. Now, I do work in a major metropolitan city, so it's a bit more competitive, and the percentage may change if you work in a less impacted city. But the numbers I just discussed is the reason why you signed up for this webinar, right? And why I want to spend about 15 to 20 minutes talking about this. Um, there are incredible talents out there, you included, and in order for you to not get overshadowed, you should give it a bit more thought throughout your interview process. Now, let me go over some more numbers with you. Each candidate typically asks about three to four questions during the interview. Again, five interviews a day, right? With that in mind, a recruiter will have heard 15 questions by the end of the day and by the end of the week. It is going to be 75 questions. And that translates to about, imagine you have two weeks off, um, 50 weeks, 50 work week, weeks in a year. That's 3,750 questions in a year. That's a lot of questions besides having stellar experience and accomplishments, which in a metropolitan city like San Francisco, there are plenty of those. One way to stand out is by asking intelligent questions, and that is why we are talking about this. Our agenda for today, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna be talking about mindset you need to have as you plan your interview and the Q&A portion of the interview. What questions to avoid? and how to plan for the Q&A portion of the interview. First thing, mindset. You need to have a career-seeking mindset. What do I mean by that is a career-seeking mindset puts you in an interviewer's mode as well. It's not just about a company asking you questions and see if you're a good fit. You certainly want to ask some questions too and see if this company will help you advance your career, open up options, and even propel your career. Second, you need an investigator's mindset. When you're interviewing, you should put yourself in, put this investigator hat on. You're not asking questions because you're told you need to ask questions, but because you want to make sure that this is the right job for your career. You're tasked with different KPIs, but do you feel that a company will help you to be successful and have the right resources to help you succeed? Do you see yourself working for this group of people? Do you think you can make an impact there, or do you feel like you'll be busier fighting the internal battle than making an impact? Do you feel like the interview, um, the interview go really quickly, and you apply for the job on Thursday, and you offer the job on Monday, and you really don't have the chance to see everything? Well, do you feel comfortable accepting a position if the turnaround time is so quick, um, and you don't have all of the information? So make sure you have an investigator, uh, investigator's mindset. Third, time is limited, so spend it wisely. And some people, I, you know, they may, you can budget an hour for a phone interview or even an in-person interview, but that is unwise. Um, you should realistically budget about 30 to 45 minutes. And depending on your experience, the interviewer will pick up maybe at least half of that time 
asking you questions anyway. Uh, so for the remaining 14 to maybe 20 minutes, what questions will you choose to ask the person? Now, questions to avoid. You should definitely avoid the following questions, such as how big is your company? Where are you located? How many people are on the team? How many people will I be managing? I don't know much about the company. I was hoping you would tell me more, would you? Tell me more about this role. All of those questions you, you should definitely avoid because they are Googleable questions. You can just go on LinkedIn as well and find out the answers to all of those questions. Rather than spending time, or in my opinion, you're wasting time figuring out the answers to those questions, um, why not just find it out yourself? How to plan for the Q&A portion of the interview? There are a couple of steps. Number one, what matters to you? Figure out what major buckets of information are matter, uh, that matters to you. Is culture more important to you? Is job success more important to you? Is money more important to you? Once you figure out what, um, what means the most to you, it helps you either narrow or broaden the kind of questions you want to ask the interviewer. Then you want to research the company on the most basic level. You can figure out how long the company has been around by looking on LinkedIn. You can figure out the size of the company. You can go on Crunchbase. You can even, um, even figure out um, you know, the gist of the company, the technologies. Um, you can find out even on Twitter, their social media campaigns. Um, there are a lot of things on the basic level you could have found. Um, but what I'm going to offer you here is a way to do a deeper research. And LinkedIn is a really, really great tool. You can take a look. So say, for example, if you're interviewing for a sales position, you can go on a company's LinkedIn page, look at everyone who works there, it does take a little bit of time, but you can write down the names of the individuals and figure out for all of those salespersons, what kind of organizational structure can you discern from the information that's being put out? Um, so say maybe a company uh, has 60 sales professionals of which um, maybe half of them are in, um, have less than 10 years of experience and the rest of them have more than 10 years of experience. What schools do they go to? Does it even matter to them? Do you see, do you see a trend there by looking at the schools they've gone to? Do you see, um, just by looking at all of their experiences, do you see domain expertise? Is that important to them? Um, are there any one-offs where uh, some of them, they don't have domain experience, um, but they have great sales background. How about revenue? How much revenue do each person or each person responsible for? Are you able to find just even one person who talk about numbers? Um, so you can begin to piece all of that information. And what does that what does that mean for you? Do you see any sales development reps? Uh, how many of them are there? How, what's the proportion like? How support one person? So you can do some deep dive and figure out the organizational structure. So when you ask questions, it would be a lot more insightful. And at the same time, it shows the, the recruiter or the interviewer that you've done some homework. Now, the other thing about you know, figure out, uh, figuring out the revenue, the, the general revenue size of the company, you know, that's what you can glean by looking at the, um, at the numbers each salesperson would present or they've disclosed on a LinkedIn profile. Uh, you can also look at people in the past, they've been there um, and, and figure out how long do people typically stay with a company on the sales team. When you piece all of that information, what does that say to you? So now that you have some of that information, integrate that um, and interpret the job description. Does the job description answer the question of what am I trying to solve? What kind of problem am I trying to solve this uh, solve for this company? Am I able to solve that problem? How can I solve this problem? What technologies are available for me um, in this organization to, to help solve this problem? And you can piece one, two, three, and now four together, one, two, three together, and make it into four. Piece all of that information as you're planning out your Q&A. Um, 
and even based on the job description, based on the research you've done from the company, can you glean how performance is measured? Now, some practical things. Um, let's do some practice here. Um, this is a, a personal case study. This is this is an actual client of mine. Um, this company is a mid-stage online learning startup company headquartered in China, backed by major corporations. They have a subsidiary in Silicon Valley, and the office there has about five people. The general manager reached out to me and asked me to find a marketing manager who's more of a gen marketing generalist, and this person would be reporting to the GM. What's important to you? And for this webinar sake, I, I come up with three, career growth, job success, and culture. Now, how do you figure out what to ask, right? Say career growth. I noticed you have two marketing specialists in Silicon Valley office right now. Um, are they being considered for this management role? Now, it depends on how you feel about the flow of the interview. If you feel comfortable, you may also want to ask, oh, why not? According to LinkedIn, in the last 12 months you've been with a company, you've already hired two people on the marketing team. What's your overall vision for the team in the next 12 months? You can also ask, why did you join the company? Or, I noticed, noticed that you were from company such and such. Why did you leave that company to join this? Or you can also ask, you've been with this company for X number of years. What do you like about this company? Job success. What technologies do you have in place? Now, this can be a tricky question, right? You can maybe do some deeper dive uh, research and you may be able to figure it out. So, as an alternative, I noticed you've been using X, Y, and Z technologies. How long have you been using it? And what's the internal acceptance rate? Based on my research, it seems like your company releases a new product every three quarters. How do the teams work together to pull off such a quick product release cycle? You briefly discussed your vision for the team in the next 12 months. Where are you at now? And this is a bit of a bonus question. I noticed um, you, there are X, Y, and Z teams right now. How will I be collaborating with them? How about for culture? I noticed there are X, Y, and Z teams right now. How would this position interact with them? Uh, it seems like there are about X number of people in the company, and a number of them are based in location Z. What activities does the company have in place to keep people connected? Or you can just say, how do people stay connected? Something to bear in mind. User judgment. You know, those are just sample questions. Um, if you, If there's some questions you're just not comfortable asking, because you feel like, oh, maybe it's a little too intrusive, maybe it's a little too direct, rephrase them. Rephrase them with your own voice. The last thing you want to do during an interview is to ask something or do something or say something that you personally don't feel comfortable with. doesn't mean you don't ask them. You just change the tone that fits yours. Second, do not let the interviewer intimidate you from asking questions that are very important to you. You have to stay true to what's important to you, to who you are. Um, but what I mean by being intimidated, sometimes you know it's your perception, right? If you notice there's a, a, a tone change on the interviewer's side or um, a body language is, uh, it's just there's some kind of change and you feel like, oh, this is getting a little strange here. If you feel like there's an elephant in the room, if you think that you know you might have, you know you might have uh, touched a nerve, or maybe you might have asked a question that is very private, um, private to the company, um, just ask. You know, if I'm asking a private information that you don't feel comfortable disclosing, let me know. But I, but what it matters to me, the re or the reason I'm asking these questions is because of blah. Um, so do not let someone intimidate you and do address the elephant in the room. Questions give people insight to the way you think and what matters to you. Um, and this is you know, my personal take on it. Um, number one, there's a reason they reached out to you and have an interview with you. And second, um, there are very little 
you can do between the time you apply for the job and the time of the interview. There's very little things you can do, things that change that in selling or working on a specific kind of technology. So you could not have possibly gone back and, and change and add or domain expertise. There are very little things you can change, but what you can change is the kind of questions you ask them, especially when it comes to tenure. If you see that you've been jumping around quite a bit, um, what you can change is um, being more thoughtful in your interview process, more thoughtful in your research and vetting an opportunity. And never end an interview without asking any questions. This is the end of the webinar. I am going to put together a step-by-step -step worksheet and guide on how to plan for the Q&A part of the interview. If you're interested, please email me at helen at interviewrightconsulting.com. Again, it's helen at interviewrightconsulting.com. You can also go on my website and um, there's a Q&A page. You can send me an email and specifically ask for the step-by-step worksheet and guide um, on how to plan for the Q&A part of the interview, and I'll send them over to you. Thank you so much for your time, and until next time, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.